I did a year of selling car insurance randomly. I was just, <laughs> do you know what? I just needed a break. I was like, I've lived this crazy life, weekly partying, and I was just like, I need some normality for yeah. just a year. And then I did that, and then, I mean, I can't even drive, so God knows what I've sold people. <laughs> 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 UK DJ producer Denny is all about the long set, and while he can slay a dance floor into the wee hours, what he really loves is starting the night out as an opener. At Dirty Bird Campout, he opened up about how his days as a promoter shaped the way he DJs now, and why he's the world's worst auto insurance salesman. Hey, I'm Reckless here at Dirty Bird Campout 2017, hanging out in this lovely shady in a good way backstage yep. lounge with my man Danny what's happening man hello how are we doing I'm uh, I'm doing good how are you feeling you've been uh, traveling quite a bit yeah it's been a long 48 hours you did an after hours last night slash this morning in Vegas right yeah and then Miami just before that which was okay. another like till 8am with Roger Sanchez yeah yeah yeah, yeah. play back to back and then that was have like have you slept five since hours. Friday I haven't really slept since Thursday, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just kind of on autopilot. But well, then you're you're in the campout vibe. I, think I know. Do you know what? everyone else there. looks the same? So it's fine. Yeah, no, you fit right in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you were rested, you'd look odd. I know. Yeah, that's it. It was far <laughs> too fresh to be here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's uh, you just finished your set. Yep. And uh, one of the things that I love about campout and something we talked about in Miami is getting a little bit more time. Uh, you yeah. got a good 90 minutes to yeah. really get in a groove. Yeah. What, what does that mean for you? Because you're a long play DJ. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like. I mean, like I say, played in Miami. I played five hours there. Um, but these these kind of sets are great. I, I think when you get an hour, it's just you can't really do anything. Even that extra half an hour. I like to like build up a groove for the first sure. half an hour, and then even if the DJ before has been absolutely hammering it, I like to kind of take it down and get in my own groove. And then yeah. even if you know a few people leave or whatever, then that you can bring them back and then you can take them wherever you want. I just think with an hour, you've just got to like go in. Sm go play. with the hits, yeah, like you really have to blow them yeah. out. That's it, so, I mean, ideally I love playing like three hours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that was good fun. Yeah. Covered in, I mean, I've only been here for like <laughs> two hours. I'm oh, dude, covered. I, I, have I haven't done anything. I'm I have dust in my blood at this point, <laughs> so you're, you're <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of the long play um, uh, like sets, and the, I'm, I'm assuming the love for that comes from uh, uh, the back to basics days. That's yeah? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I mean, I think I grew up on long sets. You know, I used to watch like Roger Sanchez mm. play all night, Danny Tenaglia. I used to see some seven, eight hour Tenaglia sets yeah, in New York. Yeah, that was it. That was it. It's like you know, that, back in those days, it was all always about building the night. Now it's kind of. Lineups are, you know, let's put as many DJs on for as little time or play back to back, and it's kind of, a, I don't know. I think the art of DJing, I'm getting really n nostalgic here. Do it, man. Uh, yeah, no, I like. I'm old. I feel nostalgic. I mean, all the I time. think I think a lot of DJs now are actually producers. Yeah, well, yeah. So you know, I, you I, can't I, really get booked as just a DJ if you don't no, have a record yeah, out there. Yeah, you know, it's very very rare. There's a few exceptions like Jackmaster or people like that, but um, yeah, I think. I don't know. I just, I just love that. Bring, my favorite sets are actually warm-ups mm -hmm. when you get to play and you kind of fill the floor, and then you get that one moment where you kind of turn it from okay to warm-up. Now we're kind of picking it up. You get to up. see that transition. Yeah, that transition's amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've grown obviously grown up uh, back to basics, where it's got some of the best resident DJs in the world, and you know, then to join that team was amazing. I mean, it's 26 years that's been going this year. That's wild. And it's, that is you know, wild. they were the first people to bring Daft Punk. They brought, I mean, that's where I'm at, Barkley Claude. Yeah. I, I was doing the bookings at the time and I actually booked him. Right, because so, you were you were staff there before yeah, you I was were staff, DJing. I did, I kind of left uni and then got offered the job randomly to do the bookings. Um, and now I was DJing in the middle room. So yeah, Barkley just kind of come on the scene and that's when we became friends. That's nearly like 10 years ago now. Yeah, because so. uh, Dirty Bird started 05, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, start, I started in 2008, so yeah, nine years. So it was new, yeah. yeah. And Jamie Jones was another one of your that early a, bookings. That was another one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When nobody knew who Jamie that, was. That was it, so it's like, Jamie was just coming through, Damien as well. Yeah. I mean, Damien had been kind of around, because he'd done his A&R and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the, it was just the right place at the right time, really. Um, I learned so much from that club. Well, it all came full circle too, because uh, I mean, a lot of your early releases were on Hot Creation, right? That's right. Yeah. I, so I, how long? How long from booking Jamie Jones as a staff member at Back to Basics to 
uh, actually putting out original production. It's three years. Three years. Were you working on production before that, or did it just yeah? Click I mean, for I, you? yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I've been to uni- like- yeah, I've been to university, so I'd I'd kind of always done it. I DJed since I was thirteen, then I kind of DJed around, and then when I fell in the basics job because it was a weekly club night, I kind of my attention all went on the promoting side, and then mm-hmm. I was kind of everything. I've been to university college doing production, oh, so okay. that was all on the sideline really playing in the upstairs room doing but, the but you had room. you had the basics yeah like, like already like that, that was it that was it. that was ingrained and then i was doing the production and then i, I actually left um basics in 2010 mm-hmm. and then that's when i was just like right i need to get back on this I was just working i was working like eight i had a day job as well I was selling car insurance and then doing really? music production yeah <laughs> on the night and then i just sent jamie some tracks and that was it, and then came out in 2012, mm-hmm. and then that's it, five years later, yeah, here we are. <laughs> so when, when were you able to, because there's always, like when you're working in, in uh, nightlife, yeah. there's always in the back of your head, this is great, but I don't know if I can do this forever. When did it change from, uh, like you said, you were, you were working in, yeah. uh, what was it, insurance? Yeah, I, I did a year of selling car insurance randomly. I was just, <laughs> do you know what? I just needed a break. I was like, I've lived this crazy life, weekly partying, and I was just like, I need some normality for yeah. just a year. And then I did that, and then, I mean, I can't even drive, so God knows what I've sold people. <laughs> <laughs> you know you must mean? be a hell of a salesman. I know, that was it. I was just selling people all sorts. You're just you know. selling people. There's people like me on the road. I was gonna be some, yeah, there's going to be some angry people at renewal. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So after that, you were able to just like go full as, as an artist full time? Yeah, 2012. Uh, it was quite weird timing because I went to Burning Man in 2012 and then I came out and I was in my RV in Vegas and I was like, oh, you're being made redundant. And I was like, oh, who needs a job? It's fine, we'll be fine. And then from that, the, the car insurance. And that was the car insurance. So I got made redundant and I was like, oh, f- fuck this. I'm not, yeah, I'll just go in the, I'll just produce. Nice. So that was it. Well, I don't see that happening anytime soon because uh, you're you're one of the really unique ones, and it's always always fun as hell to watch you play. Thank you, dude. mate. Appreciate the time Great. sitting down with us, mate. Thank you. Get out there and have some fun. Yeah, bro. I'll go roll in the dust. Hell, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. good luck. Cool. Cheers, mate.